Hi and welcome, I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. And in this show, we will interview the very talented Freya Betts and talk about how she got this far, what movies she likes, and what she creates her lifelike posters and art. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art we are talking about or check, it out, check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now let's get started. Our last guest was Greg Ruth and I showed him your art and he really, really liked it. So how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for um, showing Greg to me. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm coping. Just about. Um, I'm quite quiet, but things like this is sort of keeping my drive going, I guess, and keeping me sane. So thank you for having me on. How are you? Glad, glad. I'm, I'm doing good. I mean, we had a pre-talk yesterday, so that was that was kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, over an hour, and it was fun uh, just to talk <laughs> yeah. about stuff. I mean, uh, it's all, it's always something. I mean, I have some like I'm, I'm back to school now, and I see the students and all of that, so it's uh, fun as well. But um to see the kids again but it's more fun like having actual people and like the stuff i like to talk about <laughs> on yeah, it sure. like talk to somebody yeah so that's good um i followed your artwork for a while now and i try to pick three favorite pieces of your mm. uh of your artwork your digital artwork you did i mean there, there there are so many so i can't like couldn't like really decide what to pick so i just went for the couple i really really liked and the movies i like too um the first one is hunt for the wilder people yeah so let me pull that up for everybody see it's now on and uh, how how did this how did this happen i mean there's a there's a there's a great story behind it i heard there is a great story behind it. Um, I will get to that. Um, so this started off as a competition for Little White Lies, which is um, a film-based magazine. They also do like film reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have really beautiful illustrated magazine covers too. So um, yeah, so they did a competition for this film and I instantly jumped on it because I love Taika Waititi. Yeah. Um, I love his films. I love his humor. Um, and yeah, so he directed this. So it was an instant yes for me. I actually <laughs> got three from. Um, it was meant to be create like a wanted poster, mm -hmm. but I don't know how I missed it. But me and my mum both looked at the brief and both missed it. But yeah, so I think like if you can look at it and think maybe it could be a wanted poster if you put it in your head, maybe. Yeah, if you put if you put the money on on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. Oh, yeah, <laughs> missed that trick. But um, I had no idea until after I submitted it. But um, huh. yeah. So with this one, um, comes that story, which I'll say. But basically, I first got Twitter, and I had no idea how to use it. <laughs> this was my first tweet, <laughs> and um. So I posted it on and then I remember being at work and like my phone battery had like almost died and I was like, mm. what's going on? And I was just getting notifications after, after notifications. And I looked and Taika Waititi had retweeted it. And I was just over the moon, like, oh, my first yeah, I mean, tweet, like, imagine come on. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, getting his approval. And um, that's just amazing. But yeah, so I responded and I was like, "Thank you so much for retweeting me." Mm -hmm. And I looked. Is it, back. Was it a was it a tweet conversation or was it a, a private conversation? Oh, so it was a tweet. I tried to re reply to the retweet. I had mm -hmm. no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I replied to it, and I went back on my my feed or whatever you call it, and mm -hmm. I just saw like a random tweet of just just me and it was just like thank you for retweeting me mm. and I was like oh god I've just done a tweet haven't I <laughs> so I deleted it but then turns out I deleted oh, the whole thread no. <laughs> um, and yeah I think about that every day I really do <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got I've got a screenshot of it but that's that's at least something. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's Taika. He retweeted it. It's a that's a really great thing. I mean, did you uh, do you like his movies a lot, or are you a fan of his movies? Yeah, I am. I really like his movies. Um, I think my favorite is What We Do in the Shadows. 
Yeah. Oh my God. Did you did you start watching the the, the TV show? I haven't. No. Is it? Have you? Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I just watched um, there the, the 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 season two is out with four episodes right now, and they are. I mean, it's great. Oh. And like a little like it's it's gonna be a little spoilery, but uh, Taika is gonna be in it in the first season. So oh, check for cool. that. It's really yeah. great. It's really great. I'll put that on my watch list. Um, yeah. But yeah, do you do you like his films as well? Like yeah, I do. I'm a I'm a great fan, and I can't wait uh, since uh, they announced yesterday um, for uh, May the Fourth, Star Wars Day, uh, that they uh, that, they, that he's gonna do a Star Wars movie. So oh. that's gonna be interesting. So I'm really looking forward for that because I'm a big Star Wars fan, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice one. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, really enjoyed this one. Um, one question though: is, uh, Did you draw like all those little fine details per hand? Yeah, I draw everything. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's crazy. It's like <laughs> I don't know. It's like I don't, I don't know how to imagine this. Let me let me see if I yeah I can zoom in and people can yeah, see this remember, part now. I remember his hat being really tedious oh because all god. those textures and yeah lines. It's and it's then, crazy. The, yeah, the leaves were tedious as well. <laughs> I bet, but it turned out great. So, and like, I really love how how you play with the like, like the, this like. Oh no, you didn't play with it probably, but I like the gold uh, in in contrast with the black and the green. It's like oh, yeah. perfect color scheme. I really like it. I just remembered as well when Julian commented, the actor commented on my yeah. Instagram post, and he, I can't remember what he said. I think he said that's amazing. So that's nice. I had his approval too. Yeah, see, there you go. Big fans. Yeah. So maybe the next Taika Waititi is going to be another tweet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next post I wanted to look at, which is Mulan. Your Mulan uh, one. I posted it a couple times before uh, when I I, th I think um, I asked a question on, on Instagram what people wanted to see when, when the cinemas reopen again. And uh, this was part of it. And... Um, Mulan, they really wanted to do Mulan. And so I uh, put it in there and it's like a really great poster. I really like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was meant to come out, was it on the 27th of March? That's when, yeah, was that? exactly. Hmm. Um, that's, yeah, I had, I had the artwork I, already and I was going to post it on the day. Yeah. But. I think it was, that was uh, like the first week of Corona when yeah. I was, I was lucky enough because um, I had a press screening the week before, so I saw it already, but I, I, I'm not allowed to say anything. Oh, amazing. Yeah, the, the company that I used to work for have all seen it too, but mm. I don't work for them anymore, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that chance to. But um, yeah, so this came about, um, my agency that I'm with now, they asked me to explore some posters where I'm not just focusing on the face and instantly I was like ah, I don't know what to do with this um, mm -hmm. and I was struggling because I needed like an action film but also one that I liked and one that was still keeping with my style mm -hmm. and then I was like oh Mulan that would be amazing one to do because there's so many elements to work with but um, as I was trying to piece together like a really like action fast paced like lots going on poster mm -hmm. i ended up creating that which is the complete opposite but that i'd probably say is more true to me um and then i guess with this like m more recently i've been really drawn to traditional painting so mm -hmm. i've tried to put that sort of renaissance feel to it or like the oil painting feel mm -hmm. Is it is it the is it brushes you take then or is it or how do you do that? Uh, so I've been trying to work out what makes it look that way for so long. Hmm. Um, it is brushes, but I no maybe it's not because I still use the same brushes. Actually, I'll tell you what it is. So it's like <laughs> having a dull, <laughs> a dull color palette uh -huh. and then having the colors like no harsh lines having it smudged into the backgrounds or okay. colors smudging into each other um and also i've been doing it on the ipad which has helped me better there are some different brushes that i use mm -hmm. so i use a combination of like what is it is it is it procreate you use or fresco procreate okay did you try fresco i heard it's it also has like disadvantages but i'm, I'm not sure no i haven't tried that Just okay very, um, okay. Um, 
what what was the decision about because like when when we look at it there's a lot of let's say negative space mm -hmm. like above the character what was your choice on doing that or is it is it more for that the background you could do the the, the smudge the smudging let's call it yeah um i guess so i think i saw that portrait and it really stuck out to me like she's just got that stern look which i think you can see is like the warrior in mm -hmm. her and then i've sort of like done a juxtaposition of the um magnolia which is what mulan means mm -hmm. that's the translation of mulan so um yeah i felt like it didn't need anything else that it was just like simply and um, minimally as well if that's a word her look and then contrasted with the pretty flowers which are running in the film as well the magnolia that fe is featured in the film quite a bit i think yeah i i yeah well while you said i don't remember if it was i think in the beginning it is but yeah so she has that hair clip yeah she's got magnolia symbol on okay and then she there's the uh, i'm referring to the cartoon version but then there's a scene mm -hmm. with her dad and he says mm -hmm. something about magnolia and then okay in the trailer she's um i don't know what she's doing but she's doing her martial arts by yeah. magnolia <laughs> And it's all blowing in the wind and okay yeah a, so i f i saw it like running throughout so yeah okay. i thought i'd pick that out yeah but it's also very very cool and the last one i picked is the blade runner you did when when was that that was uh, a little longer ago right 2017 okay so when the movie was coming out right yeah so i did this one for poster posse oh cool um, I was a guest artist um, and yeah, I was really thrilled to be a guest artist. It was a really exciting brief to work on. Mm -hmm. um, the film hadn't come out when I was creating this, so I just had stills and film trailers to work from. I remember seeing something on Pinterest where someone's face was framed in that sort of way and I thought maybe I could do something different because there's a lot of those track lines and hmm. and i had this shot i think he was the shot of him was like originally he was like looking at a screen on a computer or something but i just liked the fact that it was just a bit different he, you know mm -hmm. it's a f straight on angle it's like slightly to the side and i just felt like it was something a bit different but i remember doing doing it and finishing it and i was like Oh, I was like to my mom, I was like, oh no, it's just like a giant head with like mini floating cars around him. Like, I was like, do I even like send it off? <laughs> But it has like, I think it has the, um, it, or it resembles or it reminds me of the way uh, when you look at Joy, when she is um, this this big character, when she's looking at him at the bridge and stuff like that. I think that that's what it reminded me of when I saw it the first time. So, yeah. I think it's fitting um, in that regard. Okay. So. <laughs> okay um, so this, those are my uh, three t uh, favorite um, things or the, the three, uh, three favorite art pieces I wanted to look at. And now I want to get into um, where you actually come from. How did it all start? How did, uh, uh, wh where did you come, where are you coming from? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when I was 18, I didn't go down the university route. Um, instead, I did an apprenticeship. Um, I did an apprenticeship with an agency in London and they artworked and localized film campaigns for Universal and Paramount. Um, at the time, when I was 18, I, I didn't really realize it. Like, so basically I had two passions, which was art and design or graphic design and I didn't really know that you could have a career from art or that it was particularly easy in my head I thought you know unless you were a children's book illustrator or unless you owned a gallery like that they're, they're your ways into it mm. how, how old were you at that time 18 18 okay yeah so I went for my second passion which was graphic design so I was thinking like maybe art can be my hobby and then graphic design could be my career. So um, luckily I managed to get an email address from my partner's mum's 
partner. No, my partner's mum's friend's partner <laughs> worked in the film industry doing design. And um, I contacted him and I said, would you have me on as like, just work experience, like, would you let me come and visit? And they said, yes. So I, I visited there, like, every summer holidays, every half term, whether it was a day or a week. And I loved it. Um, not only was it graphic design, but, well, it wasn't graphic, not, not only was it design, but it was also combining my love for film. So it ticked, like, a few boxes there. And, yeah, come September, people were putting in their university choices. And um, I think I was about to be put on like a college course, an art foundation college course. But for some reason, my heart wasn't set into it because because of the work experience. I was like, I want to be there like straight away. Can I like skip the university? And the only way around that for it to be possible was if I was an apprentice. So I asked, would they ever take anyone on? And very f whether they would take me on and very thankfully, they said yes. So, yeah, that's what I was doing. That was my way in, mm -hmm. and I had a great time as well. It sounds like a great time. And how did, did you start out right away doing posters, or was it kind of key art, or what did you do? So what they did mainly was localization. So we would get one main US sheet, and then we would have to translate all the copy um, all the titles into every language you could possibly think of. And mm -hmm. we were also artworking. So we would get a poster, but then we'd have to make that fit a billboard. So we'd be doing a lot of retouching as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I worked on some great projects. I mean, how, uh, so, so, so did I understand that right? That you do the basically the, the title, you, uh, like what it's going to be in German, for example? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we did German. Um, and then but so, do you decide on the title or do you just do it in german so they've they will send over the title already oh, made okay 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 US, but then we would have to work out how they made it because they didn't tell you that um so one person would be on the cinema 4d and then one person would be like creating the rest and the finishing touches in photoshop um mm. yeah it was good i mean there was one project that stands out to me with titles so you know do you know by the sea angelina jolie's film mm, yeah i think so i so, vaguely remember that <laughs> yeah the one of the the titles was um handwritten in her handwriting mm -hmm. and um i was then having to like replicate her handwriting in all different languages which was really cool yeah, how uh, did that turn out? Did, did she say something to that, that uh, you I basically no stole her handwriting? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. It was just sent off and then that was it. <laughs> so I'm not sure about the feedback, whether she even saw it. But yeah, that was a cool one to do. Okay, that sounds that sounds very cool. I mean, that's a, that's a long way. And now you are not with the agency any, or with, the, with this digital agency anymore? Or So after that, I went on to another company called T. Um, their clients were like Warner's, Disney, Fox, Universal, Lionsgate. And with this one, there was a bit of artworking, but this one had a, quite a lot of design involved. So we did key art originations. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good fun. That was a nice step up. And also they pushed me quite a lot to do illustration wherever I could. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah and then after that i was scouted by jelly my illustration agency mm -hmm. which meant i was able to quit that job and then become an illustrator which is crazy when you think back and i was like you can't have much of a career from art and now mm -hmm. it's put into place so so you're freelancing or are they helping you to find jobs or how, how's that work so I'm a freelancer, um, but I'm signed to them. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah, they will contact me for jobs that come in. Okay, so do you feel better as a freelancer doing this now, or was it better at the agency? Um, I mean, so I really love, I did really love the design part of it, and I'm very lucky in that T, the second company I was at, they still hire me in freelance 
me so I still have that element okay, but cool. I mean there are times when it's nice to have a balance and sometimes I've done a lot of illustration and it's like I would love to just like simply design a logo or something so mm. they are hiring me it's nice to have a bit of both but then also as well working on film posters or the personal work I do that is a combination of design and mm. um illustration so okay and uh, what is uh, the um, or what kind of big movie we should know like from the poster that you did for example or that you worked on is there, is there something that's like really remarkable Oh, um, I'm, what that I did with the agency? Do you mean? Sorry. Yeah, or or maybe uh, yeah, yeah, with the agency. That's about where you did the the most postal work, I guess. Because um, I didn't, I haven't created anything that's been out there. Like I've worked on um, posters with people, but I mean, so like for instance, we were working on like the concept sketches for Pacific Rim, mm -hmm. which probably one of the biggest ones I've worked on maybe. Um, but also, so we worked on Horrible Histories. I don't know if you have that over here. It's an English. Program. Yeah, no, I don't think so. We don't have that. No. Oh, so, um, I mean, like I worked on the poster creation. So I went, so I built like a deck and had to, what the shoot. So we had to do a shoot for the poster and mm -hmm. had to decide what each character how they'd be posing and stuff and then I went to the films set and did the shoot with the actors which was amazing and then um the job got passed on to another agency in the end but they still use my title so I guess nice. yeah so <laughs> I guess that's one like little claim to fame but my artwork now what you see in my portfolio I guess that's all self-initiated none of that is official artwork okay so, But soon, but soon it will change and then you will do a lot of official artwork. I'm sure, I'm sure of it. I hope so. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, since uh, you already know that we are also a blog where we do reviews for movies and TV shows and all of that. Um, what is the last movie you saw? Can be streaming, can be uh, cinema, if that's the latest you uh, saw something, <laughs> but I guess not. Okay, um, so the last film I watched was Joker. I haven't watched it all. Yeah, I've still got a little bit left to go. Okay. But um, I really enjoyed this. I had made a poster for it, but that was before it came out. So, yeah, I really liked it because, um, unfortunately, my brain doesn't seem to, like, cope with action films. Like, okay. <laughs> I only, I don't know, it, I just seem to switch off. And I wish I didn't, but for some reason, <laughs> my brain only, like, pays attention when it's like about everyday life or like a drama or something. Mm -hmm. So not that this is about everyday life, but it was a good take on the Joker where it was a bit more in a drama thriller way. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I was like properly locked in. So okay. did you see it? Yeah, I've seen it. I talked a lot about it and I think um, I had a multiple discussions on it because like, um, When the like uh, when when the uh, Oscar conversation came about and all of that, um, yeah. I had a lot of discussions that because people like like at the, I host a sneak preview at the at the local UCI here, and um, we we I think we saw Joker was on, was one of the sneak previews and then we did basically at the end of the year what was what what are the best movies of the year. And a lot of people put Joker in it over Parasite yeah. and all of that. And um, I was wondering, and because I had, that's why I had a lot of conversation with people that um, uh, that think the movie was so great. But in my opinion, it's it's a it's it's a good movie, but it's not a great movie. There are better movies um, out there with Joaquin Phoenix, especially uh, You Were Never Really Here, which you also have a have a poster of. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to put it in there for everybody to see. And oh, okay. um, that's a, that's a, also a very cool one. What, what's what's behind that? Since we're already there, <laughs> <laughs> that was um, that was also a little white lies competition I did. Mm -hmm, okay, and they uh, what what were they going for? What do you mean, sorry? Uh, what were they going for? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> In terms of they... what was what what did you have to do for? Oh, okay. Um, it was literally simply just to capture him 
Okay. That was, that was only, the only brief, um, just to capture him, yeah, as a person. That was it. So. Mm. What was your decision yeah. on, like, let's say, I mean, we, we see him very clearly um, here and uh, uh, realistic, and uh, the, the child is basically just the outlines. Yeah. Uh, why did you do that decision? Because like the focus has to, had to be on him and you just edit this or how was it? Yeah. Okay, cool. It was that. Um, and as well, I didn't know much about the film. I didn't know the storyline because it hadn't come out yet. Okay. I felt like it was fitting with the title of the film. Mm -hmm. Like you never really hear, even though I think that's more about his headspace, but just to, I don't know, give the indication of the girl without revealing too much, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so um, what are some must-see movies that will come out in the future? I guess Mulan is in it, <laughs> but yeah, anything yes. else? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing The Green Knight. Um, I'm not sure why, because I don't like horrors. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I don't know, it's just stood out to me. I think probably since Midsummer, that's like a horror that I didn't want to watch, but ended up really enjoying and... This is also by A24, and yeah. um, I quite like that as a studio. They, they, yeah, exactly. They do a lot of cool stuff, and also the um, their sh their shop ideas are very cool. Since um, since we just talked about Midsummer, I think they had um, at uh, last week or so there was I, I put the Midsummer poster up. Um, they had the dress you have in the poster. They they have the dress, the original dress from the set they had for sale. It went no, like. No, how much? I don't know. It was like in a 20 something thousand or even more. It was like at least five digits. So, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so it was like a benefit for like some benefit thingy they had it on. But uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. And they have a lot of a lot of cool stuff. I really like the uncut gems posters they had up. And I think you could even get the chain with the fur beyond, which is like crazy. And uh, that's good. Yeah, they have, yeah, they they have good stuff. Um. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, I, are you also interested? Because like, when I always when I ask this questions right now, since there's no, like the cinema is not opening and uh, people always say uh, Tenet and Dune. Are you looking for those two as well? Looking forward for those two? Oh, I'm not too sure. Like I, I'm not too sure about those. Maybe because I'm like, I only, I seem to only be really interested in like little independent films or like okay, that's drama. Cool. That's fine, yeah. perfect. <laughs> But I do want to branch out that way, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone. Yeah, I mean Nolan, he's he's great. I um like like how he works with time in his movies is like every time is so different, and I really enjoy that. And so I'm looking yeah. forward for this one, and um, also the the aspect of uh, that he's. I heard that he is always like they have a special at the uh, London IMAX. At the BFI IMAX, they have a special there a um, bunch of times, and he comes in actually, and because I, I talked to the um, to the general manager at the IMAX, and she told me that he comes in and checks the movies before and like and stuff like that, so that is like everything is perfect with his movies, and that's like a really cool thing. So um, that's very interesting. Yeah, I've seen him. I went to Dunkirk premiere. Oh, there you go. And it stood in front of me, so that was cool. Oh, that's nice. Did, did did you make a poster for Dunkirk? You should do that. I mean, that's the uh, Dunkirk art is needed. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. I quite liked the campaign actually. I worked on it at my agency I was last with. Okay. So yeah, that was cool. It was really in the in the um, premiere. Oh, we was at um, the cinema. What is it? The Odeon at the Leicester Square, and it was so loud. Like when the planes were coming over yeah. in the film actually felt like that and it was just shaking it was really really scary it was like actually like an experience yeah, that's that's one of the movies you should you should watch it in the cinema it's not the yeah. same when you watch it at home and this is no, it's a perfect example yeah okay so um what's your favorite movie then a christopher nona one interstellar Interstellar, okay, because um, yeah. you you gave me some posters, so I'm just gonna put it up here so people can see. That's that's the regular the regular one you gave me, right? And mm -hmm. um, did you like this poster or? Um, I mean, I guess it's quite commercial. Okay, yeah. 
I mean, you can I be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. It sets the scene, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like the film has got a lot of depth and a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I feel like I've seen a lot of alternative posters that are quite clever about the things as well, like mm. focusing on maybe the relationship between the um, father and daughter and things like that. Mm. But I guess it's more like an action shot of him walking across and looking all like steely and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, you did for another show, you did for uh, for All Mankind, you did something, right? Or was it you? Yeah. Yeah, you did something. So yeah, so you're, you're in the space business, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in fact, the Interstellar that I did for, which was like my first poster I've ever done. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they pulled that up and they were like, if you can do anything similar to that, which okay. is crazy because I was looking at that and I was like, oh no, that's terrible. It's the one you, you are already, you also attached, right? The AMP one, right? Yeah. Okay. Was it released yeah. by AMP as, a, as like a screen print or how was that? Oh, um, no, I just put that as like alternative movie. Oh, poster, okay, like. okay, okay. I, I thought you we, we were talking about it the, because uh, there's there's the, the, yeah. the website AMP. Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't through them. But yeah, with this, I think I was just excited to paint some headshots, but I wouldn't normally want to have like floating heads around. <laughs> yeah, the floating um, head stuff. I mean, it's, it's like every time when we when when people talk about like documentaries about alternative movie posters, they always mention the, the, the uh, floating heads. <laughs> yeah, um, at this, but at the time when I did this, I was working for XYI and Paramount are like the top ones for floating heads. So no one tried to <laughs> come up with that, probably like engraved into my head. <laughs> All right, um, let's go on to the next question because we talked about a lot of posters right now we had a couple posters up so i wanted to know what are your favorite um posters right now could be anything from alternative posters to regular posters but what do you really enjoy right now okay um so i picked three alternative posters and i spent so long trying to decide these uh, like probably over an hour mm -hmm. and then um, but at the end, if I could say like one commercial poster as well, which I haven't included, but <laughs> so my first illustrated poster is a clockwork orange. Um, Wiley Becker did this yeah. and yeah, so I just think visually it's amazing. I think conceptually it's amazing as well. I mean, like the more I look at it, the more I notice elements like the orange pills yeah exactly i did you did you like the variant or the regular better because this is the regular version i think i did in yeah. the, our late, latest poster release i talked about this one and um i think i included the variant there i like the variant as well i think maybe this one stood out to me more i'm not sure why the variant one's darker isn't it yes yeah, it has just a gray a gray color scheme and, and that's that's yeah. it i think this one is cooler because it has the orange peel which is actually yeah. orange in terms like that's yeah, that's what I think was what stuck out to me as well. Yeah. But yeah, and when you like look at it and you see like the naked women and then you see like the milk yeah. dripping. And like all his like yeah. elements with the with the stick and the hat. Oh, um, it's genius. It's really, really good. Turned out and really well. Clockwork Orange is uh, one that's done quite a lot as well. So it's cool to see one where she, I think she's done really well. It's really cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the next one you want to talk about? The next one is The Little Drummer Girl. Um, I haven't watched girl. this, but Me I neither. would like to. Um, I think anything with Florence Pugh in, I'm like, yep, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, okay. I mean, the, the whole cast. I mean, we got, we got the director, Park Sean Walk, who's great. We got Michael Shannon, who's great. We got Alexander Skarsgård, who's great. And we got, uh, great. And we got Florence Pugh. I mean, can't go wrong with that, I'd say. Yeah. Um, and I really liked this poster because actually i saw the still mm -hmm. that was taken from this and i thought it was just clever like the still is just a uh, landscape and she's like that mm -hmm. of course as you can see but just the way it's cropped in like that i don't know too much about the artist but it's broken beanie mm -hmm. and they were able to just 
capture that and it, I just thought it was a clever small crop of a still and it's created a beautiful poster and the yeah. colors are vibrant and it, it looks uh, it looks almost like a like a book cover as well I, I'd say yeah. could work, work um, for that as well yeah I really like it I think it's a good poster okay and the third one we're going to look at is uh, by Lisa Shamskaya for the great parasite <laughs> Yeah, so I remember seeing this and just instantly like that. That is one of my favorite posters of this year so far. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, I think it's beautiful. I really, really like minimal posters as well. So she's just simply taken like two elements, the like included the peach. I love how the peach is black and white, but then mm -hmm. she's used that wash over the top. That yeah, peach this, wash. this kind of fade. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I think just it creates a beautiful poster and like the small title as well. Oh, yeah, she's. Um, I was going to ask her whether it looks like she's drawn that. It looks like, like it. Not digital. Yeah, it, it looks yeah. like yeah, it looks like uh, like pencil kind of drawing or like yeah, yeah. something like that. It's like very interesting yeah. to to see that um, since we had there there have been a couple of different versions of the parasite poster and I think this one goes more in the direction of uh, what Greg Ruth did with it as well in our last poster podcast we talked about that it's very interesting as well and uh, this one uh, is by uh, her her Instagram handle is Kino Maniac so check this out guys it's uh, she's a really great artist as well and I'm, I'm trying to get her on soon so let's Are fingers you? crossed. That would be sick. <laughs> That would be really good. I I really like her as an artist. And yeah. yeah, we we both support each other. So very good. Nice. I mean, yeah, but I mean, she she does great work. I really really she love does. the latest stuff she did as well. Mm -hmm. She switched up her style as well, I think. And yeah, she yeah, has different think... concepts. That's what I that's what I really like about it. And um, I think you you switch around with your style as well. I think there's different different stuff as well. That's that's that's, that's a good thing. I mean, when it comes to concept, that's one of the most important parts when when you look at a poster. Yeah. Um, would you like to uh, make one one of your own right now of those movies that we or the the posters we just saw from those movies? Yeah, I mean, I definitely would like to do something with a parasite mm -hmm. um but there is a lot not competition but there is the standards are very high there is some amazing work like for instance greg roof's one which is just yeah amazingly beautiful um, i mean it was crazy because so, he, he told me this yeah. story when i when he saw the 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 the, the him version uh on the, on the billboard and uh that was like crazy for him that is like his poster was up there and like super big oh, that's the dream really isn't it yeah i um, think it is yeah so uh, i don't know i don't know how i'd explore it a lot of people like have done the layers of like society class mm -hmm. and yeah a lot of people picked out different elements and done it in different ways and I would like to explore it at some point. Okay, that sounds great. Do but by the way, do you do a lot of like um cuz uh, for example, when I talked to Eileen, she was like when she, sometimes she has like a day off um SG posters is that for the people who don't know Eileen. Um she when she has a day off, she uh, tries to do some personal stuff. And do you do, yeah. do you do that as well or do you just basically draw 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 and yeah, no, I do a lot of personal stuff, I think. Um, for me, sometimes, I mean, last year I was quite busy. Mm -hmm. And I think doing personal stuff keeps you sane. Mm -hmm. You need to check in quite often the stuff you love to do. Otherwise, yeah. you sort of get, I don't know, washed away by the commercial work or just... I don't know. It's you got to do it for yourself. I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I try and invest a lot of time in doing personal work because okay. that's what's most true to you. Okay. Um, do do you collect as well when it comes? I to don't collect, but I definitely it's something I definitely would like to get into. Okay. I mean, biggest reason why I don't collect is because well, normally I live at home. And mm -hmm. I just live in my room and I don't have a lot of wall space. Yeah. I have a couple of pieces, but unfortunately, I've got nowhere to put them up. So they're just in my wardrobe. But we are about to move. So when I will be able to have like an art studio, I yeah. will be able to. I want it to look like yours where there's art and there's plants. And <laughs> I'll be able to have 
small space I can. And yeah, that will be good. So, so that sounds I, that sounds very good. Um, when uh, do you follow along then with the galleries what to collect, or or do you just do an exchange with artists that you are in contact with? Um, I mean, I would like to like as soon as I saw that Clockwork Orange, I was like, where can I get it? But of course, it's just gone now but um, yeah after market only <laughs> yeah, yeah. there is a high demand so absolutely no Espe chance. especially when it comes to those mondo ones and um i think the clockwork orange was sold out in one minute or two yeah. this is crazy that doesn't surprise me but um i mean yeah it's i guess it's a difficult one as well because a lot of the work that i like as well um isn't licensed so a lot of artists can't sell their yeah. personal projects which is a shame but yeah i mean maybe a mixture of the two or whatever i can buy that's okay with buying kind of thing okay um do but do, do you follow any other galleries or just uh, just general the artwork yeah i follow the, all the galleries i would love to be part of one of them or be commissioned by them okay so, so there you have license. it bottleneck mondo uh yeah. the gallery nucleus spoke art get on freya yeah. she has she wants uh -huh. to, she wants some work <laughs> well, that would be so amazing <laughs> yeah i would love to see that i mean um yeah. i had a couple of artists uh, on right now that uh, do gallery work um and uh, it's always uh, great to have them on and i mean i for example the, the ruiz burgos um the, the, uh, I talked to last time as a, uh, in the release last week and uh, yeah, the Boba's, uh, Boba, Baby Yoda's here. I mean, not Boba, Baby yeah. Yoda's in the back here, so. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. That would be really good. All right, so speaking of uh, collecting and artwork, what, what is the last poster uh, or piece of art you put up or um, you bought? Let's put it that way. So the last piece of work I put up was so i'm currently i normally live at home but i'm currently staying at my other half's apartment um so uh, we went to so this is bernie dave's robin williams tribute mm -hmm. and this for an idols to icons exhibition that we was in um at the beginning of the year and yeah so i took away some postcards so i'm not sure if you got it on the screen yeah, i put it on he, yeah so there's a like a lovely collection of them but then he, he split each one up to postcards mm -hmm. and i think i've got four but um i've asked him whether i can purchase the full set and i i've put them up like stacked and i'm thinking like if we have the full set then we can have like from the ceiling to the floor like in beautifully framed in little square frames and yeah and so it's that's that's basically what I did because I have like a column here and I put like the Ollie Moss Avengers on there. It's like 13 pieces and I put it around a column. So in like perfect height. So yeah, it's the same kind of principle. Yeah, yeah that would be so cool. So I need to, when he's got them up, I'll, I will purchase them. It, but I've just got four up at the moment. Yeah, in, in, in a new house, you're going to do it. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah. And then the last piece of artwork that I bought but haven't been able to put up is Gemma Klein's hopper screen print yeah that's that's really cool i really like that one oh it's amazing yeah um she's like achieved so much with the color limit and it's mm -hmm. so the colors are so punchy it looks amazing so yeah when i'm in my new place that will be up there in my office yeah and people um mm -hmm. like a little shout out for uh Gemma klein um people can check out on uh, kickstarter and there's still this is still available to get one one of the yeah. pieces uh, so check that out um and uh do the world a favor and buy one of the stranger things yeah ones. <laughs> yeah definitely she's she's great i really like her as a friend and as an artist too oh yeah yeah you're right you, you told me you're friends <laughs> yeah yeah really good okay um so uh since we already know that you're going to move but what does your apartment or house or your workspace in general look like right now okay so um Back at home, I live with my parents. Um, we live in a very beautiful village with a very beautiful garden, which I miss very much. Um, I bet. At, yeah, at the moment, I'm I'm living with my partner who lives in their flat, so I'm missing the garden and I'm missing the village because um, normally that was like 
I don't know. It did wonders for my head to be able to just sort of step out and go for a walk mm. um, with such beautiful scenery or just chill out in the garden because being like stuck in your room all day. So, yeah, so I work in my room. Um, it's a very small room, so I live, work and sleep in my room and also share it with my dog because... <laughs> yeah, I, I pulled um, up your wor your little uh, workspace right now, so... <laughs> um, yeah, of all the rooms in the house, my dog chooses to sleep in mine, <laughs> which is sweet. I, I really miss her. But, um, yeah, so I didn't have much... Sorry. I didn't have much space. Um, originally, I couldn't actually fit a desk in my room. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I like this so, kind of, this, the, the, like this hanging desk, basically. That's a cool concept. I really like that. Yeah. So the reason why I had that was because my bed was there. And the only way to get a desk in my room was to have a wall desk. Mm -hmm. And then I was sitting on my bed and oh my back hurt so much like that just it just was not working and then one day um my wardrobe doors fell off and smacked me in my face oh my god but it was it was actually a blessing because now i don't have to open my wardrobe doors i've able to move my bed right up to it and oh. now i have space in my chair so after being on that desk for like sitting at that desk for six hours it's really nice to have a chair to sit on <laughs> i bet i bet yeah okay um yeah oh so i was just gonna say these are old pictures and mm -hmm. i wish the bin wasn't in it i wish the cables weren't everywhere but because i can't go back home <laughs> it's it's all i can show it's perfect i mean people see how you work i mean they uh, we have seen other offices but um i guess a little chaos uh is part of yeah. that <laughs> i can't wait to um have something like beautiful as Eileen's or have a studio like Greg Roof's. That, yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like his little nest he has created up there. That's yeah. like, it's like crazy. And the shop at the bottom. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now I want to move over since we talked about working. Um, what are you working on right now, actually? Um, so right now I'm pretty quiet, uh, which is quite a change from last year like last year I was very busy and it was really great because that was my first year as a freelancer mm. and it really got off and I got some good gigs and I'm really pleased about that um and then 2020 hit and it was a slow start mm -hmm. and then with corona much slower um yeah. <laughs> but I mean I've got a big job that I did last year that has run over to this year and then we'll I can't say what it is but it will be out at the end of, end of the year so in my head I'm like it's okay you know they have still got something in in the line but um so in my spare time I'm trying to get back into fine art and I'm trying to yeah so when before digital art I that's all I ever did like fine art mm. um painting as soon as I uh, was introduced to digital art, I just completely ne neglected it for five years. Mm. And then I, like, it's quite naive of me, I just, I picked up, um, like, a canvas and painting, and I just, like, tried to paint something straight away, and I was like, oh, no, I've, like, kind of, I haven't lost it, but I'm definitely rusty, like, and so I need to get a lot of practice in to get me back to where I was. Mm. Um, so the thing that I have, sent you is just a pencil sketch that I did of Leonardo DiCaprio I actually did that after the Greg Roof oh okay so you got inspired that, yeah that's what I was telling you about like what all, all he was saying about the fine art and I was just like yes this is what's going on in my head right now and I, I need to get back to it I was meaning to do a pencil drawing for a while and then after that I was like that's it I'm doing it right now oh, that's, and that's, that's great I mean um, the, that's what I was going for inspire other people to do uh, stuff and that's uh, yeah that's great that you did that and yeah we I'm, I pulled up the Leo and uh, you, you're a big Leo fan or um I guess I'm a fan. I mean, what helps with drawing at the moment is someone that's um, quite distinctive, mm -hmm. got distinctive features. And so I went for him and yeah, I found this on Pinterest. And oh, okay. normally, normally um, pictures stand out to me. So 
I will know when it's the right picture to paint or the right picture to draw. Mm -hmm. And this was one of them. So yeah, and, and I went with it, so. Okay. Um, and what is your approach when it comes to the artwork? Is it like, how, how do you go about it when, when like when you're creating uh, just a, uh, let's say a movie poster? Yeah, okay. So um, I would watch the film or if I can't watch the film, I would watch a trailer. And then I would scan the whole of the internet and try and find some images that have been less likely to have been seen or just basically I would try and stay away from images of the key art or things that have you know that are really out there just just to try and get something more original and different so sometimes I would find a picture of the actor and then turn them into the character so it might not be directly from the film mm. so then I would take those images into photoshop and I would like retouch and pull everything together and create the poster and then um, I would use that as my reference imagery to paint from yeah so I pre-make the poster and then I would paint it. I mean, recently I've been doing a lot on the iPad mm -hmm. um, because I like the brushes and because, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just nice to draw on something again. Normally um, I'm on the iMac with my Wacom pen and there is like obviously a lot of distance between what you're drawing and then what you see on screen. And so the iPad has been a nice to know nice connection to fine art i guess and also it's nice to um not be tied to the desk all the time especially when you're working in your room um so i can draw anywhere really yeah. um so i'd paint it and then maybe bring it back to the imac look at it on big screen mm -hmm. add some finishing touches um mm -hmm. and i guess style wise recently if it looks like a painting then I'm happy, like I've been trying to push for my digital art to also look like traditional painting mm -hmm. uh, till I can master it, until I can actually start painting properly. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I feel like uh, working, doing fine art has been bettering my digital painting as well. So okay. well, it's been and, quite positive. And how long does it take for you to, uh, is, or is that different in like saying from, from getting the concept to the finished poster? Is yeah um i mean generally i try and keep that a little bit quiet because only because of client expectations i remember i sent something over and they expected me to just have this crazy turnaround time but i mean it takes a few days from start to finish mm -hmm. um it definitely is probably a bit quicker if it's a personal project mm -hmm. because you've, you have clients amending um and you can just yeah do what you want and finish yeah. when you finish and yeah so a few days definitely okay because like when it like because because i when i talk to mostly the, the composition artists it's like it's, it's a different situation i mean sometimes they do things in just 10 to 20 minutes and uh, sometimes it takes days and it's like when it, yeah it's like a total difference to it, like drawing like digitally drawing sometimes um sometimes i'll be watching the film and it will click like that mm. and I feel like that's the best posters when it, like it just comes to you and it's almost effortless mm. but not not all the time that happens but sometimes you have to kind of work for the composition or sometimes everything just falls in place it, it's just it depends really mm, okay um and what was most challenging challenging so far for you to, for your, the stuff you did um okay, okay. so Something that's challenging for me is reference imagery because I'm quite reliant on reference imagery. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to not be, but so normally I have to work backwards. Rather than thinking of a composition, I have to normally find an image and think of a composition around that because I can think of a composition, but I might not be able to get the actors to look that way because I don't have the body shots. So I like I'm quite reliant, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but. Um, a job that I did, it was my first job with my illustration agency. Uh, it was for a train company, mm -hmm. a linear light over in the UK. Yeah, I just pulled it um, up for um, the, the image yeah. so people see. So I remember this was my first job and the brief was very specific and they gave descriptions of 
people and one of the descriptions was like a Latin American man age 60 wearing a cap Mm -hmm. wearing a waist holding a rabbit trinket (laughs) at at a like slightly bird's eye angle with the sunset beaming on him and they gave me no reference imagery yeah so I was like I'm not a concept artist and I was just like oh where do I find one of these so I managed to like pull together so many shots from Shutterstock like basically build this person from like someone's arm someone's <laughs> head put a hat on him um in the end I, I couldn't find a rabbit trinket to paint from so we changed it to a book but mm. um once painted it looked less like Frankenstein basically <laughs> so he was able to like seamlessly put everything together and I hope it went okay but it taught me to be less reliant on imagery and I mean an artist springs to mind is um and Bembe is that how yeah, you and, and Bembe yeah I think uh, I don't know how she does it but she seems to like completely ace that <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's hard I mean I I tried myself I, I tried myself to do um but more like vector graphics and yeah. I did a poster for um, friends and their documentary they released about running and I heavily relied on um, like reference images to to create all, all uh, like especially when you when you just don't have like when you don't have to do the lines but when you have to do them like with with the mouse and just click those lines that there was a that was crazy to do that so I, I, I yeah. imagine how it is without it's it's really yeah. tough as well um when they ex- when I don't know when the expectation is to be photorealistic. Mm. Like sometimes I've had um, people ask me, "Oh, can you adjust his smile so he's smiling a bit more?" And it's like, well, it was Clint Eastwood, and it was like, well, I don't know what Clint Eastwood looks like with a really big smile. Like you need to know all the yeah, wrinkles, yeah. You know every single bit of skin texture detail in order for it to look like him. And yeah, it's it's a tricky one, but I mean. With practice, maybe I'll be able to get hmm. somewhere less reliant. Okay, and um, what is some um, IPs or some uh, other stuff you want to work on, like old or new films, music, sports? Um, I mean, I would like to one day have something like Stranger Things. Like, I would like to work on a like perhaps well netflix is my dream client but have Mm -hmm. a campaign like kyle lambert's stranger things you know where it's printed on billboards similar to gregory's thing i would love to work on something like that like something new um but i mean regarding like movie franchises i i don't know i'm more into like independent films but with movie franchises it's something that i would like to broaden my horizons with Mm. Like I was saying to you, right, quite embarrassingly, I haven't watched Star Wars. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so your sorry. fault. <laughs> it's probably the worst person to tell that to. Um, no, you're fine. I, so, I respect everybody. It's your choice. Um, I would, I would like to get into things like that mm-hmm. and see where that takes me. Some like big franchises, um, but yeah. Yeah, I wonder what your what your take on Star Wars would be. So if you ever make one, um, I'm I'm the first. I'm your first client. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see what, what comes out of things like that. Yeah. So to get get me out of my comfort zone. Okay. Um. Now I want to come to uh, our almost last question, uh, or sure. like talking point. Um. I always ask, what classical artist would you like to see? to make a film poster oh sure um i would quite like to see francis bacon do something yeah did you you steal that answer i didn't know i had that already (laughs) written down i promise and then when i when i listened to him say it, i was like oh no you've nicked it (laughs) um no i i really would i think yeah, I think that would be really cool. I just like his distorted faces and the, like the darkness. So mm-hmm. I think he'd obviously work well with horror. Like I would probably like to see him do something like Midsummer. I don't know. That would be cool. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just something creepy or yeah. And then I think 
um, the po I used to also really like the Ophelia depictions. I studied them for A levels. Uh -huh. Have I added that in? Um, the John Williams Waterhouse, you you did that. Yeah, I mean, like I, I just quite like the pre-Raphaelite. Yeah. What what, I don't know. what what should he what what should he do? What do you mean, sorry? Uh, what did you say? No, no, about uh, John Williams Waterhouse. What what uh, what would you like uh, him to do? Like which film? I I was still thinking Midsummer. I need to get that still, out of okay. my head. Too. Okay, yeah. I mean, I mean the reference photo. It looks very Midsummer. Yeah. That's. I think that's why it pops into my head. Um, just like because of all the flowers, I guess, mm. and the nature. I think that would work really well. What What would you suggest? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I don't know his other style, but Francis Bacon. He could. I think he could do. Yeah. I think horror. Every, every any kind of horror he would do. Hereditary yeah. would probably be also very cool yeah definitely so yeah yeah but yeah i mean midsummer is a good choice for uh john william waterhouse so <laughs> yeah i'll take that um okay that's uh, that's a good answer i'd say it's always it's always fun like what, what artists uh, come up with like when it comes to classical artists or like more um artists that are far away from movie posters what the, like what they would do um yeah. we we also talked about Caravaggio we had the, the like Scott Saslow in the first one he said Caravaggio as well and I think yeah he, he connected it with the Avengers which is like yeah I could see definitely that see that cool. yeah I think it's cool to do something that um you wouldn't expect as well so like Francis Bacon looks horry so maybe a genre that is less expected would be cool yeah let's let's, let's see a Disney film <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mulan with like For example. Face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um the almost last question is do you have any tips for beginners when it comes to software? Uh what kind of software do you use? Hardware, what kind of hardware? Social media take? Um tips for beginners, I would say if you do fine art, never neglect it because I'm learning the hard way. <laughs> um, I would also suggest, so if you're doing like film posters, I would suggest to check out Poster Spy, alternative movie posters, um, and collate like a mood board, just of all the styles that you like. And then I think eventually you will start seeing a pattern and then you can focus on that type of film poster because there's lots of different types or like type of genre and then just just go for it um with social media i think it's really great because you can post your work you can speak to people so yeah. or you can reach taika waititi <laughs> yes you can have potluck and all kinds of things and get responses from the subject matters themselves but i mean as long as you use Instagram authentically and you stay true to you and you don't sell yourself for likes or whatever, I feel like if you always be true to you, you will be happy uh, art-wise. Um, yeah, and just to go for it. I mean, ask people as many questions as possible. There's an amazing community out there. I have answered a lot of questions by asking people. And yeah. I got generally... In film poster world everyone's lovely yeah so. even when when i did this kind of first poster i did um i i got help by dolly i got help by eileen because i asked them so that was kind of really nice when 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 i was uh, trying that and it was cool so oh i would like to see that yeah i'll show i'll show you later i don't have it up, i don't have to have it up right now but um the people can find it under the craft runners um the speed project is that that's what it's called in uh, on, on vimeo it's a video on vimeo if you type in the speed project and craft runners you find it my poster is up there as well and i just did it for the 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 one time release they did it in the in the cinema and so yeah. we did that there that was cool it's really cool yeah it's definitely nice. okay and what kind of hardware do you use is there any I recommendations use yeah, I use Photoshop um, on an iMac, and I use iPads with Procreate. Mm -hmm. But do you have um, a Wacom tablet as well or something like that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I have this. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, I would 
like to have one where I could draw directly on it. Um, I bought the 27 inch black one mm -hmm, okay. and <laughs> it was so heavy. I had to take it back. I, could, <laughs> I, I had in my head, like I was going to have it on my lap and I was just going to be doodling like an iPad, mm -hmm. but it was like this thick and it was so heavy. I couldn't even lift it onto my lap. So I was like, okay, that that's perhaps not what I'm after. <laughs> But um, yeah, for the, this does the job. Uh, but yeah, I know there's some really nice snazzy equipment out there. Okay. And uh, we have also an Instagram question. And uh, this question is uh, by James Hobson. You know him very well. Oh. Hey, James. <laughs> He asked, um, what would you do if you weren't an illustrator? What kind of job? Oh, God, uh, yeah, I've... I sit and think that myself. I have no other hobbies, no other interests. <laughs> Literally, who knows? Like, um, illustration is pretty much everything to me. Like, it's just my drive in life. Like, it's my focus. It keeps me sane, but also it kind of does the opposite. Like, makes me go a bit mad at sometimes mm. with, like, deadlines. I mean, like, it's my life literally does evolve around art mm -hmm. um so i have really no idea i mean before when i was 16 i worked in the little post office so maybe i'd still be there <laughs> a post office wow i can't even see you there <laughs> <laughs> oh no i didn't enjoy it to be fair i feel so bad thinking back to it but people used to complain because i was so moody <laughs> <laughs> okay but um <laughs> shout, shout out to the post found... office there <laughs> oh no it was so bad but yeah and then i found art and now i'm much happier so see at least something you could do i mean i mean it would have been cool if you would have been when you were like at that at that age and you would draw like cool paintings on on the on the envelopes and just and like they yeah. send get sent out and now people have an original freya bets <laughs> yeah a little collaboration between me and the post office yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe 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 you do stems soon who knows Mm. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Royal Mail, you heard her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, then the last thing I want you to do, do you have any shout outs uh, to fellow artists you want to uh, thank here on this place? And uh, also, where can people find you? Okay. I have a lot of shout outs. Okay. You made a list. But I hope it, so. <laughs> I have made a list, but I actually, I was... I haven't finished it. So I'm really sorry if I've missed anyone. There's so many people I could shout out. There's like such a large community of everyone that I speak to and everyone's so lovely. And I'm really sorry if I've missed anyone, but I'm going to go for it already. <laughs> James Hobson. Thank you for always supporting me. I'm not going to do a little description for each. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaren, Ben Turner, Gemma Klein, Scott Wall. Scott Wall is a very big inspiration to me. Boy 30, Lisa, SG Posters, Adam Stoffard, Doli, Sham, Miragaya. Oh, now we're gonna have to freestyle. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Is that enough? Okay. You, you, you decide when it's enough. I, I give you all the time I, you want to shout out. I can keep going, but I'm not going to. But yeah, then uh, then let's put it this way. Uh, where where can people find you because there you you post for, uh different artists from time to time so that's that's a shout out there so <laughs> and people can find me on instagram freya bets art um and actually my handles are the same for everything so just search that and all right perfect so uh you heard it freya bets are uh, freya bets art Uh, you will find that on all the social media and check this lady out. She is very great. She does a lot of great stuff and uh, the future is very bright for you. So thank you for stopping by Freya and thanks to all the listeners out there and tune into the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe to this uh, podcast and to our IG page at DropMakeOfficial and leave us comments, shoutouts or topics and questions for our next show. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>